修行不容易哈，<笑>还好啊。OK， 我想把这个故事讲完。现在是另外一个故事。Now is a different story, different event in Mahavira's life. Okay. You want to hear or not? Yes. Yeah, of course. You have both translation English and Chinese and Korean and whatever, yeah? Yes. Wow, what lucky people. When I was in India, in the Himalaya, I had nothing. You just guess, you know? <laughs> just guess. Half of it is some Sanskrit, half of it is uh, English, and the other half is hair. <laughs> Everything other than hair, <laughs> just like Korea, Amita. Uh. <laughs> so whatever the English I understood, a hair I understood, uh, the other one uh, one third I did not. So you can say that I understood two third <laughs> whatever the master was saying. Yeah, and not too bad, right? Mm. Two third better than nothing, huh? Don't you think? Yes. Okay, good. Now you understand everything. You lucky people. We are trying to accommodate you guys, huh? Hopefully, you really understand what I was saying, and what I am saying, and what I will be saying. Because sometimes, when you sit there in front of me, I feel like you understanding things. But when you go back home. I think maybe you return all the knowledge to me, with no interest. And then, whenever I have chance to talk to you personally, then I feel like, oh man, <laughs> whom have I been talking to all these years, or months, or days, or hours, or minutes? I wonder if. I have been talking to any ears, or just talking to my elbows. Huh? That's why I don't wear the sleeves, so my elbows can listen something. <laughs> At least some listening. Eh? You guys have good translation. See, si, Sava, good. Eh, you, huh? No. Good. Bono. Bohot, bohot, acha, bohot acha. That's all I know. Don't ask any more, <laughs> any more Indian language. I told you I understood only two thirds, right? She said、uh, only hair and English. Yeah, and the rest is、uh, whatever the local language that the master was speaking. Okay, let's、uh, read the story of Master Mahavira. Yeah, everything that he has to endure. These are only, I guess, only the main things. You know, either the main events in his ascetic time, or just something that happened with the gods from heaven. It's not、uh, all his life, of course. The whole life of the master, whoever、uh, the master may be. Cannot be written in just one book or two books or a hundred books even because there are many things, even the physical happenings. You cannot always write it down because sometimes the master did not say it, or sometimes there was no witness to recount, or sometimes、uh, they thought it's not important, or sometimes it has been told but it's been lost. Yeah, because there was no. Person there who was capable of recording what the master said or what's the story content and what has been told. The Buddha was lucky, ah.、Huh? The Buddha has、uh, Ananda, you know, and he's always next to him, so he recorded everything, and he has a super, super, super recording capability. Some people do have that, yeah. Some people have a good memory ability. Some don't have. When we were younger, we have a better memory. When I was younger, I remember everything immediately. I even remember the whole book, or at least most of the 
poetry book that was very famous in Vietnam called the Q, okay? And also other book of poetry, yeah, the whole story poetry book. I remember them. My father used to be very proud. Whenever some VIP come to my house, he called me in and tell me to recite the whole thing. And when I became older, a memory became less sharp. Then I don't remember all of these things that I used to remember, and I don't remember quickly what I have just read, like when I was younger. So these stories I am reading to you are not all of his life, okay? Bear in mind that the life of any master is never to be completed in one book or any book. doesn't matter how many, okay? These are, I think they just pick out the, the main event or whatever event that has been passing down, okay? Now, this is another story about uh, quashing of the flames. Before we had story of uh, embodiment of love, the affliction by a demon, and the, uh, uh, the cruelty of the cow herd, the removal of poverty, the great renunciation ceremony, okay? And this is another one called quashing of the flames. Once lived in Sravasti, Sraman Vadaman was going to Halikduk village. On the way, he saw a large banyan tree. Banyan tree, yeah, similar to Bodhi tree. They have very big trunk. And uh, is that right, sister? Yeah, and have many roots that hanging down from the branches. And these roots will become trunks later. And then they will take hold of the soil and make themselves more solid with big trunk again. So the tree became bigger, 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 bigger all the time. And nothing can remove these kind of trees because they had too many legs. <laughs> the body tree is a similar thing. The reason why many uh, ancient practitioners, they sat under this kind of tree, it's like Buddha sat under Bodhi tree because they are large, they are huge, huge, and their shadow and their leaves are dense. And even if you don't have enough clothing, uh, it would chill you from the rain and the wind and the sun because it's so huge and the the shadow spreading all around, maybe, oof, you don't know, could be even many hundreds of meters uh, large, the shadows. Therefore, even no matter where you sit, you will always be sheltered, yeah, at least from the sun and some of the rain, you know, so that it doesn't rain so harshly on your body, especially when you are an ascetic, like uh, Lord Mahavira, who has no clothes or cloth at that time. But I was wondering why nobody offered him anything. I mean, the normal villagers, they could offer him some, you know, old piece of cloth or something, or maybe he did not accept anymore. I mean, he get used to being without anything. That would be also the ultimate freedom. Yes, that <laughs> you have nothing to worry about. Like, me, myself. <laughs> what do I wear today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My destiny is a little more complicated than the destiny of the Lord Mahavira and the Lord Buddha or the Lord uh, Jesus, uh, for example. Whenever any master reborn, the destiny changes, you know, according to the, the period of human history. They don't always do the same thing. Somewhere a long time ago, I read one magazine in America, and they said, Jesus, he has predicted, he said he will come back as a woman, and they will not recognize me. That's what he said. I'm not sure how trustworthy this kind of a magazine's report. Okay? I'm just telling you for your mm, entertainment <laughs> info. Like one in Bodhisattva, yeah, Avalokitesvara, she reincarnate time after time, life after life, yeah? But sometimes she was a wife, she's a normal wife, and sometimes she is 
uh, as somebody else, yeah. And in Buddha's time, she was just a bodhisattva, no wife, no husband, no children, nothing. Yes, you remember one of the story about Kuanin Bodhisattva? Yes, she was married to a man, yeah. And at night, when her husband was sleeping, she saw one of his hair growing very uh, unruly, <laughs> unregularly, and inorderly out of his chin. So she was thinking, oh, she want to cut it, trim it, make him look handsome. Yeah. And she just get a knife, you know. She has not done it. She got a knife from kitchen, yeah, sat next to him and was about to do it. And she put her knife next to the, the neck already, uh, uh, chin already, and the husband suddenly woke up and he sounded alarm, you know, tell everybody, oh, she's going to kill me, she's killing me, help, help, and all that. The whole household woke up and she was scared, you know, of course, she's frightened. Everybody woke up and then want to catch her. So she had to run. She had no time to explain. And she had to run, and she ran, and then on the way she saw a temple, a yeah? Buddhist temple, and she went in. And she told them that she's a man. <laughs> she had to say that she's a man, and she wants to be a monk there. Yeah. So, of course, the Buddhist monks, they don't always uh, check in too much about their history, or besides, it's very difficult to check. Now, those days, they don't have computer, <laughs> right? They don't have anything store in the uh, software, hardware, or whatever where that you say. Ah, okay, I had no idea what software is and what hardware is and what middle or where. I just wear what I have to wear. <laughs> the rest, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no. Uh, so they didn't check anything. They didn't say, oh, of course, if you want to be a monk, they welcome, welcome. Nah? Because in Buddhist tradition, if Anybody want to be a monk, you have to let him. Hmm. And if you stop them to be a monk, yeah, then you have very bad karma, yeah, according to the sutras. And if you let somebody be a monk willingly or help him, her to become a monk, then your marriage is very, very big, huge, immense, yeah? Remember those uh, Buddha scriptures I read to you? Okay. So, of course, they welcome. And the, the temple always need uh, one or two more hands, you know, to help with cleaning up, repairing, as well as, you know, all kind of uh, arts and ends stuff, yeah? Yeah. So she became a monk and stayed there peacefully, safely, for a while, until one of the Buddhist followers, a beautiful woman, came along. She liked him, or her, or him, yes. <laughs> she liked, they liked, she liked the form of that new monk. Oh, because she's beautiful. Kwaning Bodhisattva, as a lay person at that time, was beautiful already. That's why she was married into a rich family, a huh? good husband. And even if she shaved her hair, she still looked stunning. He. Uh, she has <laughs> beautiful, handsome. Oh, this woman fell head over heel in love with this monk, nun, whatever. <laughs> monk, okay? So called monk. Ah, she keeps trying so hard to get him. But of course, uh, this monk is no monkey business, yeah? So, of course, he refused her outright all the time, anytime, and she felt very hurt. This person, this woman, this lady, a uh, girl, she was actually a daughter of some very influential family, yeah? So she won't take no for an answer, eh? Huh? Anyway, all of her affection is a very unrepaid, and she will feel very, very, very frustrated and angry. And then somehow she managed to uh, have an affair with a servant boy in the house, and then she became pregnant. And then in those times, if you are pregnant without being wedded, then you are a criminal. They beat you up. 
They dig a hole in the ground and put your stomach there, and you lay down with the stomach in the hole so that it won't hurt the baby, and then they beat you up and until you confess who the father is. She confessed that the the new uh, monk in that temple, the handsome uh, nun, is her uh, lover. Man, okay, they came and dragged her out, him, her out, and then uh, beat him up also terribly. Tell him he has confessed or not. She remained silent, because if he confessed, he's a liar. And if he doesn't confess, uh, then also no good. They keep beating her, the woman also, to get another uh, father, okay? So he just keep uh, quiet and... Finally, they cannot beat him up anymore. They also got tired of beating. They say, okay, uh, you cannot be a monk anymore. And then when the child is born, we will talk about that. Yeah, You want to marry this woman or not? He say, no, no can do, don't want. <laughs> so, of course, they throw him out. So the temple people also cannot do much more they put him, her, outside in a little hut. Yeah, maybe a Mongolian tent outside, outside of the temple gate, because he's not allowed to stay inside anymore as a monk, no more monk. Yeah. And so they still let her do the work, you know, taking care of the temple and all that, but he's not allowed to be a monk or stay inside, you know, anymore. So he stay outside. And when the baby was born, the family, the girl, took the baby and brought it to the temple and said, you have to take care. And she want to marry somebody else at that time. Okay, something like that. I can't remember very well. It's not a big mistake that I made, <laughs> whether I remember or not. And then, so the monk didn't know what to do. He had to take care of the baby. Yeah. He took really good care with all the motherly love, which is very easy uh, manifested because she's a woman and a loving one. So every day she, a monk, uh, went out begging for milk and food and then bring the child up uh, until he grows up, maybe about nine, ten years already. And then one day this monk died. The Kwanin Bodhisattva manifestation died. I mean, reincarnation died. She died, and then of course they have to, well, after a person died, they wipe you, they bathe you with something, and then they change your clothes into clean one, and put flour or something, and then carry you into the coffin. And then they realize that this is no man was a woman. So everybody oh, felt so, 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 so regretful and so sad and so sorrowful. So they worship her from then on. <laughs> <laughs>